there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today we're gonna take a look at the July 2020 Smart Art Box. This video is brought to you by smartartbox.com. You can check that out if you would like to subscribe and get a surprise box of supplies to your house every month or purchase a startup bundle or past kit. They have lots of good stuff there and they ship to a lot of places all over the globe. So um, if you're watching this, they, there's a good chance they ship to you. So we've got our orange tissue paper as always and let's see what we have this month. So we've got a set of blending stumps by Royal Magnical and these can be sanded to clean them. I've used these before so I'm pretty familiar with those. We've got a pack of three Spectrum Noir art liners um, in 0.005 0 0.05 and 0 0.08 milli millimeters. Why do I want to always say milliliters? It's weird. Um, we've got a kneaded eraser. Oh my gosh, that's the tiniest, cutest little kneaded eraser I've ever seen. Uh, we've got a box of Derwent graphic pencils, which I think are just your standard graphite pencils in a variety of ledges, uh, lead hardnesses. Uh, let's see, we got a 2H, HB, 2B, 4B, 6B, and 8B. Oh, I like those softer ones like the 8B and 6B, and it's got a little sharpener in it and a nice little tin case, so we've got those. It must be a drawing box here. We've got our pamphlet. We've got a set of tinted charcoal. Let's take a look at those. Six tinted charcoal colors. I have some of these because a friend of mine, these are made in Great Britain, a friend of mine uh, who lives in the UK sent me some a few years ago, so I have a little bit of a, um, of a, knowledge with these, but I haven't used them a lot. We can swatch them out real quick on this paper that came in here, which is Lennox Cotton Paper by Legion. Um, let's see what we got here. We've got... This one is natural. This one is peat. I like this paper. Uh, this one is forest pine. So these have just a little bit of a hint of color. This one is burnt orange. They feel very much like a pastel pencil. Ocean Deep. I hope this smudges out because, uh, and lavender, um, because it's really hard to see their tones just as they are. So let's give them a little smudge and see. Don't run it out of fingers, guys. So we get a little, just a little very soft, um, soft rouge of color to those. We've got a lollipop and a sticker. Now the brochure here will go over what the month's topic is and uh, looks like it is drawing, presenting charcoal, Derwent tinted charcoal pencils. So this gives you a little bit of background and more information about all of the products um, and a couple little step-by-step um, projects that you can do. So this is kind of nice, especially if you're like homeschooling or, hey, who's not homeschooling right now? Am I right? If you got kids, you're homeschooling. Um, so it does give you a few, a couple different ideas to work through with these supplies. I'll give you another idea today as we work through our project. And um, yeah, there's always, you know, plenty of sheets of paper so that you can get a bunch of different projects done, which is good if you've got a kid with siblings and you want to do this as a homeschool activity, or if you just want to learn about a new art material yourself and, um, and play with it. So without further ado, let's go to the project. The product that interested me the most about this box was the tinted charcoal. I also thought that would be the most interesting to you guys because I think everyone's got a set of graphite pencils and um, I thought this was just something a little bit different. And even though I've used these before, I haven't used them all that much. So I'm going to start off by sketching a, a raven using the, I believe this one is called uh, marine. It almost just looks like a, a really dark gray. It doesn't really, this one doesn't really have too much of an undertone of color to it. So I thought it would be good this kind of cool gray to um give it that kind of like a crow or a raven coloring and I, I really like this pose i thought there was a really nice contrast between the crow and the background i found this reference photo on unsplash actually both of the reference photos i'll be using are from unsplash and um, i was just in the mood to draw a crow today i don't know why i've been in kind of like a bird i've got i've got a bird brain i've been in a, a bird mood lately um so i should probably just like you know sketch and paint a bunch of birds and get it out of my system and then uh, 
uh, you know, dole out the videos, you know, when I'm in a flower phase or something to break things up. Uh, I don't know. Um, but I think you should definitely draw with what's in your heart, what you feel like, and uh, and go from there. I'm using this felt stump there. It's like a felt felted paper stump to just blend and give myself an all over toning. And um, I needed to sharpen some of these pencils and I've had some like mixed results with sharpening them. Um, I find that it needs a little bit of a larger sharpener to sharpen them well, and I do find they tend to break, so you have to be careful with these because the leads are really kind of soft and delicate. I had some decent luck with um, with using an electric sharpener, but I think, honestly, the best sharpener for these is a knife, like a, like a craft knife, so you can kind of whittle off the wood and sharpen it that way. And then maybe use like a sandpaper sponge, if you need a uh, sandpaper pad, rather, if you need to uh, point it at all. Uh, because you can like erase and sculpt with a needed eraser and you can blend with a stump. I don't think you need to have a really, really fine point on these. And, um, you know, with any sort of soft media, like a pastel pencil or a charcoal pencil, it will tend to kind of crumble on you. So just kind of be aware of that as you're working. Um, I like that I could layer up and get a variety of different values with just the one pencil. And, uh, it was really kind of fun to work with. I didn't find much advantage over a tinted charcoal for like this color versus a regular charcoal because there isn't a lot of color in it. But, um, I could see like if you're typically a charcoal artist and you want something that will just, I don't know, maybe give you a new perspective or just a change of pace, that it would be something fun to use. Uh, I really enjoyed sketching with this, but um, charcoal is not one of my favorite medias, so... Um yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It's not something I would seek out, but I liked it. So for the second one, this is a, um, from a reference photo from Unsplash of a bird flying and the tip on that yellowy tinted charcoal broke almost immediately. I think it was called burnt orange. So I had to sharpen that. And um, it took a couple different methods. I tried a handheld sharpener and it broke. I tried my electric sharpener and it broke. I had to use the really big hole on a handheld sharpener to be able to um, sharpen it at a point that was shallow enough that the lead would stay um, would stay intact. So it is kind of, um, it can be kind of like a fickle medium. And I think luckily these, these pencils came in like a blister pack. I think if these pencils had come loose in the box, it would have been, they would have been a goner. They would have been totally, um, destroyed in shipping. So I think I would recommend if you're going to purchase just, um, tinted charcoal that you get it in like a tin or a blister pack or something so that you're not buying loose pencils that can be like jostled around as much. Um, it's a, you know, it's, it's just kind of a, a gentle, um, delicate medium. So I just basically sketched in with a burnt orange, did a little toning, and then I went in with this kind of green color to get some of the shadowing, um, using some of that, um, that gray color that we used before. I didn't really have the colors that I needed, but since they were pretty, I picked pretty neutral subjects, so I wouldn't really need a lot of color. Um, and then I just kind of layered up what I had for colors to, you know, flesh it out and fill it out. I did have a little bit of a, of an error drawing the face and the beak or maybe while I was blending it I lost my lines a little bit so that was a little bit um frustrating but all in all I enjoyed the process I actually I guess could have live narrated this I thought it was going to take me a lot longer than it did um but you know I think this one might have taken me like maybe 15 minutes and the other one took me about I don't know, eight minutes. So uh, it's a very quick medium. And I do like that about charcoal. I generally will use charcoal if I'm like at a life drawing group or something like that, where I need quick uh, toning. I don't tend to use it on my own, left to my own devices in the studio very much, but it is definitely fun for quick sketches. And I would recommend it if you just want to kind of loosen up and, and uh, practice get some quick sketches done. I really like the paper that came in the Smart Art box. And actually it's not recommended for wet media, but I did try it with some watercolors and I thought it worked really well. Um, it's got, I would say, between a hot press and cold press texture to it. Not quite as textured as cold press watercolor paper, but um, it's it's a lovely thickness. It's got a almost like a crispy abrasive feeling to the to the surface of it. So it must have some subsizing because my watercolor did not um, did not feather when I used it on there, but it did warp a little bit. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's a beautiful paper, and I look forward to trying some colored pencil on it because I think it would be excellent for using colored pencils. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll probably do a video on that at some point in the future. I'm cleaning up my drawing with the kneaded eraser and um, getting out any of those like kind of sketchy marks that I put down just to 
kind of line things up. It did erase really well. The tinted charcoal erase, erases much better than typical charcoal, it seems like. Maybe I'm just remembering wrong, but it does seem like it, it erases a little bit better. And uh, it layers up really well, especially on this paper that has a little bit of a tooth. Now I'm going in with some details. I'm using that dark, um, that dark, I think it was called marine or ocean or something like that, to, uh, to get those darker tones in. I'm adding some of the brighter yellows in there. I put the shadow for where the feet are going to come. Um, and also some shadow to round out the body a little bit. Lavender's nice because it's a nice opposite to that yellowy orange color and it just gives me a little bit of texture, which I'm trying to get that feathery texture to, uh, to be apparent. And then I'm just blending it out a little bit because I didn't want too much texture. The eraser works as a white pencil, basically erasing back to the white highlight and reshaping the beak a little bit because I got the uh, I got the beak off as I was going. And now I'm putting in the legs, which are kind of pulled up towards the body as he's flying and giving a little bit of definition. And there you have it. Here's a look at the finished drawings. This was a lot of fun. If you would like to learn more about smartartbox.com, check them out online. There'll be links in the video description. And I thank them for their support. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Thing.